Welcome on back everyone into Total War Warhammer 3 and part 11 of our Mother of Stonkia Mortal Empires campaign. We start things off in today's episode here on the Diplomacy screen for a bit of a surprise defensive alliance. All we had to do was join Lewin and the French army in his war against the Greenskins and uh, he's willing to sign a defensive pact and gave us a little bit of gold which we will absolutely take. He's calling us a supplicant but we will uh, we'll ignore this. He doesn't know that Mother of Stonkia has always been the lady. Done. The nobles will be pleased. Always good to halt their plotting for a time. Oh, you can always just ask a stunk to halt their plotting. And then now, at any point, we can go ahead and slot in our outpost here with Reichland and Garone, which we absolutely will once we are able to build up our golds for Lady Ulrika. We've discovered a new trinket. Really, the Bretonians count as different than normal. What's our new trinket? Into the witch's hut. We have now a branch of Arden. Interesting. The ancient forest. Fair enough. So when we use it for a blessing, we will get a attribute immune to psychology for the assigned unit. And if we use it to create a curse, you will remove that unit's fear and terror for the assigned unit, which is honestly pretty insane. Allows you to take one of the big scary terror bombs that enemy has and completely nullify that and then make them themselves susceptible to terror, which is great. All right, well, no more gold is spent. I actually went ahead and upgraded a Wolfenberg here because with the 1300 here, we should have just enough. And if not, I have gone ahead over here in Arnheim and we're going to demolish this frozen outpost, which will be giving us 1200 back as well. So we should have plenty to uh, Get on into Castle Noctaven and recruit Orca. Before we do in that turn, we'll give Urkalisk a few skill points here, going for creatures of the land for himself. Up to six additional. Oh, it's actually eight additional melee attack and 12% more weapon strength. How awesome. Mine by right. So 31 isn't terrible. We're starting to close at our normal Cossars. These four spider hatchlings are just not very good. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and ignore all of our upgrades, no matter how sad it makes me. I think this much money just sitting here hurts. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and come on back over to Estonkia. And that'll be our turn. Try the cheese. I wouldn't. It might make you explode. War has come. A time to answer Ulrich's summons. They want us to join their war with the Barrow Legion, and they'll give us some money. That actually sounds like a great idea. How much more money are you willing to give us for it? Doesn't have that much. Let's see about making it up to 1650. Yes, you're begging for a stonkiest help. Give her more money. Our goons are expensive. We have a treaty. I'll continue to give you back your lands. All right, all right. So it looks like Egelbert and a few other armies have come up to fight. Uh, we need to fall back. Another time, swines! Is it our turn? No, it wasn't. Sylvania was just making a decision. So what did they end up doing? We have successfully completed our Blade Bait the Bloodborne quest. Interesting. So the three of them just kind of spread out here. They were in March Dance, which means we probably could have done some decent damage, but with that many black coaches and all these other lads coming on in, we definitely wanted to uh, pull back. We'll let Ubel here kind of hold the line in Needling. And we will come back in here Ruzina. to Lugenheim. Well, why can't you move? Ruzina, ready. We'll figure that out in a moment. So we've successfully completed uh, Bait the Bloodborne. We can continue to say that wrong. Actually, that reminds me. What was your... If you have played any of the Dark Souls games, what was your first introduction into the Soulsborne games? Mine was actually uh, <laughs> Bloodborne, which was... A horrifying first experience. Winds of pain. The world yields to those who master the winds of magic. Great bolts from the heavens scour souls from bodies, whilst raging torrents of fire rend the very flesh from bone. Magic can rip enemies into a dozen pieces or leave nothing but an ugly bloodstain where they once stood. Power granted by the cataclysm many eons ago can be harnessed to bring ruin and destruction upon our enemies. All those who would feel the pull of magic feel it grow as the world festers under chaos's ruinous gaze. Their need to ravage grows stronger and stronger by the hour. 
which is pretty terrifying for any of Astonkia's enemies here. Floor of Hags, it shuts down their spellcasters completely. We got Ulrich of the Vampire. Upon gaining entry into Nachthofen Castle, you discover that it is indeed harbors the vampire Ulrika Magdova, Sragov, and her mentor, Countess, uh, Countess Gabriella. While both are incredibly strong in their own right, Ulrika's lack of control has caught up with her, causing the two to be backed into a corner and outmatched by the adversary before them, Mother Estonkia. Let me fight them, Ulrika snarls, her fangs bared and swords unsheathed. I have bested greater warriors in single combat. I will not be found wanting for... Before she can continue, Gabriella swiftly steps forward to present another option. Let them go, for Ulrika was turned against her will by a vampire countess. Gabriella continues, explaining that she was fulfilling a promise to train the young vampires to do no harm. The story seems genuine, but who can her but can such creatures of the night be trusted? The sisterhood who played games of political misdirection. No, it is clear what must be done. I like it says no, like we absolutely will be executing her. We will be recruiting Ulrika because if you execute her, you'll just gain half measures, no quarter, which the populace is grateful and feels safe knowing its enemies cannot hide. 15 turns will gain 25 growth faction wide and 10 control, which this is really not worth it for the all of the bonuses Ulrika gains. So we will go ahead and recruit her. Dire as times are, if the homeland is to be, pre is to be protected, then allies cannot be turned away. Ulrika Magdava. I think Ulrika shall be rolling with Mother Astakia. We will let the Golden Knight head on down to join up with Heaven down here. In the meantime. Onward into Glory Ride. Clearly the Ulrika and Gabriella are no friends of the Ruinous Powers. They cannot be allowed to act of their own accord. Ulrika will not return to Noctuffin Castle, but will instead continue her training in our service. While many are unhappy with this decision, perhaps you will find redemption through fighting our enemies, for peace and a noble death. Indeed. I see the Let's take a look at our new legendary hero, and she is actually available for the Empire as well. Pretty much the exact same quest line. Right, I think with the Empire you have to just build walls up for her. Don't quote me on that one, but it's just the building chain I think is a little bit different. So she gains the Silver Dagger. Neither armor nor wards can turn Ulrika's Silver Blade from its target. Such are its innate magical properties. So that's an activated ability that gives her magical attacks. And then a bump of 25% to both base and armor piercing weapon damage. Pretty solid. A little bit sad that she doesn't gain magical attacks always because of the Silver Dagger, but such is the way. We've also got the Blood Shard, which is the souls of this dagger's this deadly dagger's victims are trapped within its onyx blade, where they must remain subject to its wielder's magical whims. So the Blood Shard Dagger gives her a spell mastery of up to 20% as she is slaying through foes on the field. And then she's also got a unique ancillary, a Gabriella von Nachthofen. No portraits of the influential Lamian sister exist, where she changes her appearance frequently, or frequently and drains the blood of any aspiring artist who attempt to capture her likeness. This will gain this army plus five winds of magic and then a little bit of experience per turn because she is training up Ulrika. Fantastic. We shall come on in here then. Any armor we have spare for you? The Hands of Ursun and the Biting Blade. I'm not thinking so. We can grab a student on in though for the research rate. Everything else, though, she'll have to go ahead and earn. Actually, as I say this, she is actually a spellcaster, so bringing her with someone who is not already filled with spellcasters is probably a good good call here. Ulrika shall come join Kevin. Commander of the soldiery. Kevin already has all of the heroes, doesn't he? Ulrika, come join Kevin. Hardened by war. Hardened by war. She'll come on over to Krugenheim. She actually also has, we'll take a look at the unique skills real quick. Uh, we'll have the Barded Warhorse Mount, which is just fine. This is an Imperial Horse. Got the Blight of the Skaven. Dragon Slayer, and we'll go through these a little bit more in depth here in a moment, but we'll just quickly mouse on through for now. She gets very powerful very quickly. She gives her army some spell resistance, immune to psychology. Pretty huge bump to a healing cap for herself, and then finally the uh, proper hunger places the lesser hunger that she currently has. 
which is just a very, very small heal. Up to 0.1%. I think it, it must be one that builds up as, as long as she's fighting. So it starts doing it nothing, but it is up to 0.1% the longer she's throwing down. But that gets uh, flipped over for the normal vampiric hunger later on. She's also got loyalty to the motherland, giving her the by our blood passive ability. That's kind of... I think these skills are exactly the same both on Kislev and the Empire, which is what makes her a little bit more unique, where she has both at the same time, very hybrid. She's also going to be a confident all-rounder. The good old Merciless Attacker. Prudent Defender, which are just a little bit different names for the normal melee attack and defense stats there. Insurance Policy, which is again, just another name for armor. Charge Bonus there, Foe Seeker, and then... No Qualms Killer being 20% weapon strength and armor piercing damage. Staying power for a lot more hit points and physical resistance. Uncanny range with the ability to Snipe. Ah, so she can get Stalk and just kind of drop fools from afar. 30% more range is insane. And then all a Quiver. For 30% more ammo and a little bit more armor piercing ammunition. Good, good stuff. She's also got the Lore of Shadows for those who like their Pit of Shades. Do not think me a witch. No, you're, you're definitely not. That's why you're joining up with Kevin. Mother of Stonkia only has witches and the Golden Knight with her. So we could move immediately on to Black Pit. Probably a good idea to go after Vlad and Edmund here, though. I refuse. Thou art Ultimate uh, duel between Vlad and Mother of Stonkia would be great. We've got enemies all around here, and Felman's likely to go right after Middenheim. A bit unfortunate. Might have to sacrifice Weissmund again. Stop building this on up. We've got the same thing we did last turn. Where we will jump into an ambush dance. Up next to Middenheim as 95% chance looks like fantastic, but I want to be able to reinforce Middenheim if these clowns trying to think funny. Good old purification chant here at Hergig. Knock off all of that Nurgle nonsense. Yeah, this is already out and about again, too. We've got a lot of enemies here. See why the Empire was being pushed back. You seem confused. Seem confused. A whole bunch to deal with all at the same time. No. Guggenheim has a few defenders there. We can roll. Defender of Kislev. Like we should have used our uh, purification chant here instead. Leader of Kislev's warriors. I think we can hold the line. Let's drop back into Krugenheim. That way we can do some replenishing. We have here is the farms and the other money-making buildings. No, I think not, Mortal. But I prefer to have a Spearman other than Spider Hatchlings. They've got 29 attack, 50 defense. But we'll keep the spiders for now. Hold the line. We are likely to lose Hergig here, so let's go ahead and stop construction of that building. Sad as it makes me. Swing on back over towards the home front there the with Urkulisk. That's a fairly safe run of things at the moment. So my friend, you just stay here. Respect Let's go back to the moon shard. Chosen and we can upgrade everything we can here at uh, Arnheim. I'm thinking, what is the garrison looking like here? That's not terrible. The tool maker allows the entire this region to make a little bit more gold. Bump up the harbor, would bump up the council city and silent grove. I guess also it would the roads. The Orthodoxy shrine not as useful here for us. All it's going to do is allow us to get in a few more patriarchs, which. Their replenishment rate is fantastic. 
you know, I think we'll come on in here and grab the Toolmaker for a little bit of a bump to our income and the ability to get those heavy war sleds and a little Grom later on. It's fairly cheap at the moment. Champion of Kislev. Over in Quintex. We're going to be waiting quite a while to get that up to tier 4, so let's go ahead and upgrade the Spinitzas. That way we get maximum, uh, maximum growth and control. Over to the Griffin Wood, where we will go for the Maximized Gospita. I'm thinking we'll go, just go ahead and snag an additional uh, Market Square here. For more income. Curtain Walls as well. For better defenses. Hawk, Hawkland and Midland are both in pretty dangerous place here. I wouldn't mind upgrading Middenheim, so we can keep Stonka here to defend. And the fact that we are upgrading it should lure them on in too. The old fools. So let's come on in now. We've got the Craven Scent. Now that we unlocked that branch of Arden. Negative 24 leadership on top of whatever else we would be applying here. Moving fear and terror, losing physical resistance. A pretty, pretty strong debuff for one unit. Let's come on back over and grab ourselves an additional rat's crit though. Gonna quickly become one of my favorite defensive blessings. The extra range is a bit wasted. Is there one we can use instead? It's got that's the bones. Those are all missile related? Interesting. So rat's grit is for the Akshina. Security Interesting. The size. The well, let's grab ourselves a bear's bulwark for the big bear. And then a whiff of madness for any kind of chariots and spellcasters. Stuff. We're probably going to do that a little bit more cleverly. We've got an incisor of man and a cold one's fang still left over. Which trinkets are we missing? Cathay, the dwarves. High Elves, which we're closing in on an alliance with. Chaos Dwarves, Lizardmen, Ogres, and Nehekara. What Got all that pretty, pretty close by. Alright, let's keep on moving. Go ahead and steal some tech from the challenge, don't you? Irritate Kolek. Behind well done. How they burn their snits into the ground. Woman. Which? You, the specialist, you're kind of traveling around for us. Immorality and evil. See you later. That cause of Mira here. You can maybe try to take down. Wind, it isn't that useful. Take down Grog. Who she failed. Go ahead and train up an additional Frost Maiden. Mishka. Ilchinko? Ilchinko. Raised in the saddle. Send Lucia up to uh, steal some technology from Drakenhof, or we'll circle her back around that no way she can try to wound some of these other vampiric heroes. Each one they have is incredibly they important. Oh, I bet. It wasn't that you were a, a failure or anything. So sadly, we ignore that there at Hawkland. Let's come on into our diplomacy. Lewin should have a safe area to actually build in an outpost. Oh. None of these are great. Grungzint is right next to Marienburg. Alright, Ziflin is in an even worse spot, though. It might be Langi. It would give us all of his cavalry. So Field trebuchets, probably the best course of action. Then we'll grab the mission request to deal with Masha. If we get to it, we shall. Only land that Reichland has is what we've been able to give him. Well, my friend, we'll keep try to keep you alive. We're here to defend Kisla, but they're doing just fine for themselves, so it's up to us to defend the Empire for some reason.
strange that bits of paper keep us from one another's throats. I mean, sure, Stalton is uh, one we should not be trusting. He wants a defensive alliance. This is going to slow down our confederation with the ice court just a little bit there. Interestingly, they are starting to be friends now. Historical relations and prejudice. Yeah, we'll go ahead and... Do you have any more gold to give us, my friend? 2650. Ooh, they're willing to give us a little bit more. 2675. Even more. Don't mind if I do. We'll take it. As the orthodoxy required... Sounds a bit strained there, my greasy friend. Ah, Sylvania caught me in the middle of a drink and some coffee, so we've just got Vlad himself, huh? His army is very elite. I see nothing here that Astonkia shouldn't be able to deal with. We'll go ahead and allow Weissman to fall again. These are... We're just gonna pretend these aren't real people. They're spirits we left in the city who uh, pretend like it's defended. This lad for your duty! Decisive defeat. Oh no. And it looks like they're gonna move on Krugenheim as well with only two armies. Is this a joke? Alright, well. If it's a joke, it's not a very funny one. Let's go ahead and apply our Agony Succession to as many enemies as we can. So let's go Agony Succession on. I'm thinking the X Ray is gonna be an excellent choice. We'll also go ahead and apply it to. With a grave guard. That should bounce around. The zombies we don't care about all that much. We'll, we'll deal with them in time, no matter what. Not only the single fragmenti, that I don't like so much. We'll add this to the Sylvanian count here. Marcus Berichmir. Marcus Berichmir. Madness on so far golf and the Geist as well. So as soon as they do commit to combat, they're going absolutely nowhere. Let's go. Same thing with the Blood Dragons. The Blood Knights. And with the secondary army here, which is still going to be absolutely terrifying. Entropus is the one where anytime you're casting spells, you get worse at it. Actually, let's go ahead and put that on the spellcaster here. He's likely to hide back in the back and do nothing the entire time. And then we'll pass out a few more Agony Successions. Lovely. On this lord, on you poor fools. And who is the most dangerous unit here? It's honestly not the Black Knights. Let's go ahead and apply the Whiff of Madness to the Cairn Race. They're not leaving whatever combat they throw themselves into. And yeah, we'll use the last of our Agony Succession. Do we need all of these blessings and curses? Probably not. Now we switch over to the Blessing side. Let's go ahead and apply the Wrath of Grit to Kevin. And then we will have... Do I have any Spirited Aways left? These make me laugh 100% of the time, even if it doesn't usually actually work until far too late. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab the uh, last Spirited Away and give it to one of our spiders here. Who is the most expendable? Looks like you, lads. Hang on now. Can I apply this to our... Oh, I can. Well, cause of my dervishes, you get the honor of becoming a bear this battle. Should be great. We'll grab our unburdened step... Oh, hang on now. The bear's bulwark makes them heavier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give this to... our, uh... Agwitch of Beasts here. Make her a monster. All right, vampires versus Kevin. The revengeing. And the vampire hordes sit waiting for their reinforcements. Agony succession is already going to start kicking in to effect uh -huh, on the units that we have applied it to, battles. which is perfect. But no, we'll probably see a little bit of a difference said, from what I did, just because agony succession is completely random, which three units it does apply to. Let's take a look. Starting things off, I wanted to apply as much damage as we could to these hex raids here, as they are ethereal. They've got 
no armor whatsoever and a heap of physical resistance. So we want to just hit them with as much magical damage as possible to rip them apart before they even hit our front lines. That is a devastating unit if they're allowed to make contact with any of your units. Ghosties are incredibly powerful. Nice whiff from the hex or the witch mother there. Now we're missing arrows, we're missing magic. Where did you guys learn to aim? We have successfully lured the hex raids on over by themselves, which means we can kind of bring them on over to the rest of our army. We have plenty of units waiting in the wings to rip them to shreds with both magical and otherwise damage. Frostworms feast on corruption. Arrow Whites do end up catching our Hag Witch there, but the big frosty boy is there to intercept. Get in the way, take down as many as he can, and provide a blob for our archers to fire upon. Ghosts, I would think, would have a little bit, in most games, have a resistance to the frost, but not in this one, and they go away quite quickly. Did a little bit of friendly fire damage there from the shotguns, but a combination of Snow Leopard and Frost Worm was able to annihilate that group. We have another contender at the one at a time Midas game of duel here. Man on his desiccated horse flies on over. Glued some wings onto a normal horse. This is not a Pegasus. You can't convince me otherwise. He has his laser eyes locked onto Kevin. Let's see if it works out any better for him than it did the X-Raids. He's made it a little bit closer to our line. Wooden Knobs Brawlers are going to have something to say about it quite soon. They've got a shorter range musket, but it does an absolute ton of damage. And all of it's armor piercing, so he's back up in the air, but just open season for our flying and mutilated horse boy. A predictive shot going in there. I'm not sure how all of that damage actually managed to land. Good on you, archers, for your heat seeking arrows. And while I was going to bring the Frostworm in to finish him off, we didn't even need it. We just let the archers and the brawlers finish the Vampiric Lord. One down, one more to go. Engelbert. But so far, we've already dealt with several of their most elite units. Next, most important for us is definitely going to be uh, these Var guys. They've also got some blood dragons. Where are their blood knights hiding? Over in the woods here. They have spread their forces very wide. The AI does seem to know when you've got units hiding in the woods. Uh, so they, you'll see very soon that these poor Arkshin are about to have a bad day. We've got the knights spreading out on both sides. Karen Ray is going with them. Another very excellent unit. A little sad that we don't have any uh, lower tier spirit boys for uh, the likes of the vampire counts. Hopefully we'll get them pretty soon. The whole units of Crypt Horrors is also going to be quite devastating if they manage to actually make it into our front line, but we have lots of lots of expendable warriors there ready to give their lives for the motherland. I think we'll be fine. I was sending both of our heroes on over to try to lure Engelbert on out. Didn't quite work for us, but I noticed that the Vargeists were circling, so... Paul's arrow goes up and fells one of the beasts, and places that on a fire effect on them. Or if there was any heals coming to them, it's going to be greatly diminished. Those Black Knights sprung out of the tree line there to ambush our Hag Witch, who's desperately trying to get on away. Probably need to bring in some help to get her free from their lances, as the rest of the army is bearing down. Snow Kitty charges on in, ready to enforce as many undead knights as possible. And we've got the spirit things in the woods also ripping into the back line just to try to give our Hag Witch some breathing room. A little unfortunate that we had to use our summon there, but they're going to get plenty of damage. We'll also drop the rocks on their head, get even more. The uh, 
Abut Jaeger, their white geek, is going to sue our units on out of there. A little bit sad they didn't commit any more to that fight, but the Black Knights are wiped out just with two of our resources. Not a good trade. Volley hit most the into our Patriarch. He's going to charge right through and try to get into a fight with our Ice Switch, which we're quickly going to disengage from. Keep the Patriarch there as a uh, bodyguard. Really keeping my eyes on these bar guys here. As the Blood Knights are moving on in now, trying to find a opening. If they can, they'll absolutely go after Kevin, so we're going to need him pull him back as well. Frostworm moving on in is a lovely tank for our lads. Our guys charge in and raid page out, going straight into the Kiss of Light Warriors. The damage they got just on the initial charge. A purifying unit. Fight begins in earnest. We've got Blood Dragons clashing with Kiss the Light Warriors. Trip Ghouls charging on past them to get into a fight with our Ice Witch. As many of our archers helping out as we can, we've got the Oath Brothers ready to smash on in and deliver the uh, lightning. Here comes the night ambush through the woods that I did not see until it was far too late. Brock Sheen are getting some excellent damage on those uh, Blood Knights, though, as they fall before getting too much, too many kills to their name there. Crossworm is absolutely holding down the fort so low. There's some Kiss the Fight Warriors in there as well, but we're not going to mention them right now. Axe is out. When the moan club is bigger than your whole body, I don't I don't know what your hope really is in the fight. It's not a good time for anyone. Patriarch bashing the uh, big bat on the head with his orthodoxy club. Battles anyone's game at the moment as the whores charge on through the lightning of horror blinding this group of crypt whores. We're going to definitely be using the Oath Brothers as a elite killer. It'll take some damage, but as long as we keep them with some allies, they will do it fantastic. This group of Kiss Light Warriors has been completely surrounded by zombies. Bad day indeed. Oath Brothers fighting side by side with the big Frosty Worm. Patriarch and the Snow Leopard throwing down with Markle and Rose Descend from the Heavens. Got some Spear Kiss and Bites that are starting to lose a bit of ground here. There's a lot of Grave Guard and some more expendable Spear Chaff there that are gonna pretty quickly make short work of those Kossars. Our Spiders in the Woods have dealt with the Karen Raids and Knights with Harding. I think that if one gone on around, we've just lost a few of the Spiderlings. That is to be expected. Notice we had a little bit of a gap, and there is the Necromancer that was completely undefended, and so the Frostworm is gonna go use that hug. But no contact yet. It is not all that chunky, as you can see. Crossworm needs some help. He won't continue to smack that uh, dead frost lizard, but a buff is indeed needed. All right, Gerbish is here helping out the wolf part Oxina that have taken a little bit of damage. Not enough to cause them to flee or take too many losses as the Binding breaks across the field. The undead fall. Such a fantastic battle. Marcus and Engelbert prove wanting. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the Solyak provides here for that replenishment. We got absolutely smacked around a little bit for our Kislevite warriors. All of our frontline troops took a bit of a beating, but we got through that uh, completely, for the most part, completely unscathed. We didn't even get to utilize our uh, spirited away dervishes like I would want to. How sad, but also very predictable. 
Victory makes us stronger. Oh, you're coming on in for more, are you? If we are resolve this, we lose all of our little spider hatchlings and our pistol white warriors. Um, but we win the battle, don't we? Well, I think it would be foolish of us to uh, get rid of our troops like that. We'll go ahead and give this Entropus on over to this spellcaster. We've got Typhlosis for his important units. I would say we're going to give this to the Cairn Wraiths. Let's go Gate of Thorns. What do we just have? All of the Whiff of Madness. Well, I guess we might as well just pass these out to all of the different uh, chariots here. That's all we've really got. So over to our blessings. We go Rat's Grit on Kevin once more. A Bear's Bulwark on uh, Agwitch because it's hilarious. Can we win this one without losing anyone? Ooh, almost. Ember Dread for more melee attack. I really like applying this to our, our War Bear Riders. Since there's so many big beasties here, let's go ahead and make sure we rip through them as quickly as we can. Ember Dread on uh, the Oath Brothers of Tor. I'll go ahead and get rid of this little parenthesis name here. We know they're Warbear Riders, we just want them to be the Oath Brothers of Tor. Right then. Kevin Evgen, Vampire Slayer. And this battle sees an upgrade or two to our elites, as our Ice Switch and Patriarch both are now riding upon Warbears of Urson. They should now be much, much bigger threats for the foes. All of them are going to, although their attacks are going to be mostly armor piercing now, they are a much bigger target for the enemy to tear down, but war bears are an absolute menace. And we shall see so very soon. So very similar to the previous battle, except for since we don't have the Vanguard deployment on this Hag Witch, we'll be moving on in to harass the important targets, especially these speedy ones, to try to draw them on away and towards our lines. Starting with, of course, these Vargeist here, as they are the last cannon unit that we can draw away and deal with fairly quickly. However, it looks like our Morngulls instead are going to charge on out of the forest. Nasty aquatic, half-rotted corpses. They're hungry. But this will work all the same. We can lure them on over. Still one of their linchpin units. With them quite quickly. Absolutely horrifying. Let's go. Imagine these things crawling across the field towards you. Their hands are like the size of a horse. No thanks. There's a whole squad of them. Evan's not scared of a few more goals, though. Him and his ice unicorn. We'll get you to Parthian shot them all the way over. Each blast that comes out from the ice or the hack witch and actually lands is another incredible bit of damage. Some smoky boys. Evan, you keep whiffing. You're embarrassing me in front of my wizard friends. Pretty good damage though out of the could use a few winds of magic, which I would say is not necessarily needed. We'll watch the health bar rip down. As they get closer to our defensive line, we have set up here on the top of this plateau, decided to make this battle a little bit different. We've got our spiders hiding in the sides, and then the Kossavai also our dervishes over on the far side. We'll see if they even get to do any fighting. Lauren Golds realize they don't like arrows so much, and then turn and quickly disappear into the horizon. They're just far enough away that I am no longer able to see them. I'm actually curious to see what exactly happened with this unit. As you'll see, I send some troops over to try to scout them out, but we never quite catch them. They just went straight back. How did our Hag Witch not see them? She is so close to them. She's just been barely not in the radius. Interesting. Well, that's cool to see. A little bit of a repositioning here with our troops because I've realized that they are coming out in a pretty huge swarm. They'll be congregating more towards the center here, so we're going to center uh, Shagan, our Patriarch, and a few of our other more important units around to make sure no one gets into our archers. Speed the battle on just a little bit there. 
I was really trying to find the Mournjols, but they ran all the way back to kind of this area, which is really interesting. All's arrow felling another of our guys. You get about one kill per arrow, which is fairly worth. I'd say it's better to use on a single entity. One that is going to be trying to heal a whole bunch. Fast movers screaming across the field to try to catch our, our heroes and lord. Black coaches are going to start making their way across the field now. As soon as they do make contact with anyone, they will immediately rampage and hopefully lose most of their normal combat effectiveness. The wolves managed to catch our snow leopard. Not great, especially since it's not defending itself. Quite a bit of damage is going to go down before it turns around. This first group has been stopped cold by the nets of the white wolves. So the combined fire there should pretty quickly put it into this group. Magwitch blasting a few of them off with her Maroom spells. Notice they have actually a pretty, she has a pretty good anti-air quality to those spells as they knock down a few of the bar guys before they even made it in. Snow Leopards are going to be on anti-black poacher duty while our big Frostworm turns to deal with the returning Morngulls. We've got our shotguns advancing to try to get some blasts in on the Black Coach here. We're going to drag that thing down with some gunpowder. Got a lot of resistances. The Oath Brothers of Thor, though, giving chase as well. Frostworm despise you. Patriarch has taken quite a bit of damage, and now that the Morngulls are coming on in as well, that's not a lot of fun. We'll want to move him on back just a bit. We're going to get a Solyok provides prayer down for too long. This poor black coach is now also rampaging. We've got two of them locked in here with the Oath Brothers. We're struggling a bit, so we'll drop down the Lightning of Thor to blind these two units, effectively dropping their stats down. Two zero each. Six on the other. It allow them to rip those black coaches apart very quickly. Zero four is locking down at this choke point as the poor unfortunate ghouls make the long trek round. A group of hounds is disintegrating away before they even make it into another fight. Gotta give the Morngulls credit, they can hold the line for a very long time. Now, most of the black coaches are now ruins. Pull the Hagwitch away and then try to bring the Oath Brothers back as well as they take quite a bit of damage. They're not necessarily for a, a frontline fight. Definitely a shock and awe cavalry. Yeah, it's got the axe whirling. Our spiders are moving in to finish off the four dire wolves there. Scuttling menace. They're always on cleanup duty, and they do a fantastic job. The most elite janitors in Kislev. Icy Dance of Doom blasting apart the Grave Guard's formation. I guess luckily for us, these Cairn Raids decided to stay well out of the fight. We were getting blasted into the Spirit Realm there. Gotta love the, the animations of the Frostworm. would be lying if I said I wouldn't, I'm not using them just because of how awesome they are on the battlefield. They're not the most useful, but they are incredible looking. The old Mr. Freeze Frost Breath. Bear Brothers lock in. More lightning should crash on down, blinding the Karen Rays, those that do still have the backbone to fight. Our four Boyd Nobs Brawlers are in the middle of a yet another nasty brawl. Which I guess is exactly what they want. Victory, Kislev. And we 
managed to pull off a heroic win there, getting a heap of loot. And only losing around 23 of our soldiers in the flood, and we managed to keep most of the damage onto our Frostworm and our different heroes, which is easily healed up by our Patriarch's uh, spells, or his battle prayer there, the uh, Soliox Lullaby. Speaking of, we'll go ahead and pray to Soliox once more here for more punishment. Talk to me, you commune with Kislev. That's right, Durthu. Yes, where I have no further need of you. They condemn aversion and strategic threat. They like everything we're doing with uh, Sylvania, but it's just not enough. Apparently, the uh, tree people despise the mother of Kislev. Be flattered that I haven't cursed you yet. I mean, he's he's cursed just by his existence. He wants a defensive alliance, and he'll pay us money. Sounds good. An agreement we can get behind. Don't worry about haggling here with a Theoderic. Very well. We have an agreement. And Felman now moves in. The fool. Didn't even realize a stonky was hiding in the wings. We'll go ahead and give this one to the auto resolve and deal with the scaling here. Still ended up losing around 362, which is no good. That went more on a Stunkia's army than I would have liked. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the gold. Now we've got plenty. We'll go ahead and take execution of the captives. Leave their grave on the mark. Because we could possibly gain a trait that'll give us even more leadership drops for everyone in the region. Wayward royalty. During routine patrols, our lancers discovered a young Imperial Duchess lying half dead on the Oblast. It seems she had been trekking to Kislev for months to prove her fortitude to her doubting family. She traveled impressively far, but the elements who finally grew too cruel. Uh, send word to her family for more allegiance with Reichland, or nurse her back to health for some gold. Warm her frozen blood with our finest kvass. Once her palate has known the incomparable taste of the jewel of Kislev, she will pay a king's ransom for more. Wait a second. Are we nursing her back to health just to create an addict? A kvass addict. Settlement lost, Weissmund and Midland. Disaster. We've lost Weissmund. See, but did uh, Vlad to say, uh, decide to stay there? That is going to be his doom. We've been using Weissmund as an excellent trap. A couple new bailiffs. Three or four of them. No mad riding master. He looks like he has had a hard life. And a veteran warrior. Banner of Prague gives the 35 meter radius immune to psychology, which is very, very good. Blessed by the Grand Patriarch himself, this horn glass, uh, cloth scrap is a potent symbol of Mother Kislev's unbending defiance in the face of insurmountable odds. That was the first time Prague was burned to the ground. Yet another bailiff, a vodka distiller, the war bear for Kazahela, and Chagin Kamov there, which we saw in the previous battle. They got to ride into the fray atop glorious bears of Ursin. Golden Knight is upon a horse. I think I would prefer her being on foot for now. Several Adamant's advisors. What an eventful intern there. Mother Astankia will get you, they say. So if we take her off of the War Horse. She actually loses armor, health, and obviously her charge bonus. I think I would prefer to have the Golden Knight on foot. Bending our front lines are very small amounts of front lines. She can also be the wall that everyone crashes into. We can freeze them and then annihilate them with uh, Mother of Stonkia's spells. Do we have any armor for you yet there, Nariska? No, but we can combine up the Biting Blade and the Manus of Person, which I'm not going to because it's unique. Bayless all over the place. You a vodka distiller, then. I guess nothing else. Skill points, though, I will happily pass out. So the top line is mostly for making her better. Ward save from other Astonkia sounds perfect. Cooldown for Astonkia spells also sounds perfect. Let's come on back over to uh, Gretel. And it's a little bit sad they don't have a melee line of any kind. You could make them pretty dangerous with the Slay Dirge. 
Maledictory of Madness is a Rampage spell, but it costs quite a bit. Let's go ahead and uh, grab some Forbidden Fins. I think this maxed out will be quite cheap and very good to just toss around to kind of slow people down to a near crawl. Especially with the freezing effect that the Golden Knight has. As for you there, Talika, we're just finishing off the spellbook. Drujena. No points everywhere. Creatures of the land here for Kevin. Rally, and then we'll come on over to Skirmish Traditions first for that ammunition and missile resistance. Be great if it was also a reload time reduction, but such is not the way. The noble choice. As far as his Hag Witch goes, though. We'll grab those magical reserves, the transformation of Caden to summon in the Manticore. Make it cost as little as possible. Very good for hunting down necromancers in the back line. Troops. More melee defense. And let's go ahead and give him better corruption cleansing capabilities since we're down there in vampiric lands. As a halo, we will give the maxed out guardian call, which just gives us a elite. I believe it's a gold chevron level melee stat line on the the snow leopard there for guardian call. Correct me though if you know better like to have the proper info there for the channel. Let's go ahead and give you Biting Wind, Blind them. There's one of the spells here that does. Now, Biting Wind is not great. It moves very quickly and doesn't do a lot of damage while it does. Swift Wing will give us charge bonus and speed, which we could apply to uh, the Oath Brothers of Tor. But he also has the Akshina, so let's go ahead and grab the Gust of True Flight first. Beautiful. Make sure there's no ancillaries that you don't have. I don't see a student on you or research rate. Then we can give you the frost shard glaive since you are on a bear. Ogre blade maybe for the patriarch. But oh, no, we want the patriarch to have the maddest person. Yeah, absolutely. Weapon strength, wet armor piercing, the and then... Of chaos well, I guess him rampaging isn't great, is it? This is what I do for Kislev. Well, we'll see if this is something that makes him unusable. I will go ahead and combine up these two, though. Or a Forbidden Rod, which we will now combine up for... Frost Shard Armor, which we will then give to the Golden Knight. 8 armor and 20% more spell oh. resistance. She's up to 55%. She's nearly a Dawi Lord and has an absolute ton of armor. The unbreakable, unshakable Golden Knight. Let's move in. We'll attack Frederick first. And if each ends the fight, we should be able to annihilate uh, Vlad, no problem. Well, they do stand and fight. Can we just deal with them with the good old auto resolve? We sure can. See you later, Vlad. Do not disappoint us, Dunkia. did fantastic. We only lost 156. And we'll go ahead and execute them as well. Without struggle, my shadows make it almost so Vlad gets to keep himself and all of his elite units. Such is the way. We can then move on in. Down, but probably not out. As you cannot really kill what doesn't truly live. We did Vlad von Karstein, so she'll be back much, much faster if she gets wounded. If I get Mother Astakia wounded, I am going to be quite disappointed in myself. Already down the red line just fine. Let's continue moving down her blue. Which I'm thinking it will go for that corruption drop. Heed my hexes. Vital point into the curse there. The red will grab that forbidden fins and if then for the golden knight. A woman to do it. These are all her yellow line. Even though they're all yellow line, this is her actual melee yellow line here. Celebrate now, Missile resistance sounds amazing. But I would not be gaining any buffs from any of these others here. So let's go uh, training first. And then maybe personal bodyguard. Give uh, Mother Stonky even more melee defense. For me. She doesn't have a ton, but 42 is quite a bit for uh, for a chariot. 
Especially a chariot that launches nukes. Okay, can we finish them off with a quick auto resolve here? No problem. See you later, Vladdy. I'm going to go ahead and take the settlement back. This belongs to me now. Plague is a little bit annoying, but I think it's just the Aggie one, so it's not all that not all that dangerous. Or our ears are bleeding as well. That's that's no fun. The lands protect. This was then a fantastic settlement to use as a trap. Come on back down, claim Altdorf, and give it back to the Imperials. Hopefully before Malabod gets there. I'd wither first. We've got so much gold now. Let's go an additional point into Mentor for Astonkia. Say hag. Last point into Forbidden Fins there for Gretel. Hag and then Lucia, you're out on your own, so let's go ahead and give you Specialist. Beautiful stuff. Your God of Slavins. Slavins. We haven't gotten to use him, but I have finally renamed our Windigoon to Windigoofy, so our good old elemental incarnate beast has been renamed. It's only been quite many episodes. I apologize for that. Basically what had happened is I kept starting off episodes in the battle, thinking to myself, okay, now remember to name the big beastie here as soon as the battle's over, only to then immediately forget as soon as we got back out on the campaign. With Coven's Curse Mark, is anyone foolish enough to be lingering on our land still? Uh, Wolfric is. Thanks for allowing me to use some of my curses. We appreciate you. And now we'll go ahead and start refilling our Agony Succession pile then. We used almost all of them. Fragmenty as well. They've got blue and yellow to use. So we go with Madness. And then yellow and green for Unburdened Step. And I'm thinking if we want any of the Unburdened Step, let's go... I'd say Immunity to Psychology is going to be a little bit better than Extra 8 Leadership, so that'll work. Perfect. 602 more Essence. We are speeding along quickly towards our final Hex, and as soon as we gain that one, that's the final battle right after that. Victory for Astonka quite quickly this time. Champion of Kislev. All right, Kevin, we get you another auto resolve here against Wolfric. Fight Could for be Mother no problem. Kislev. Fight for Mother Kislev. We lose nobody. To battle. Yeah, we've pushed them back pretty aggressively at this point. We'll take the extra spirit essence here. You will oppose Kislev no more. Oppose Kislev no more. Nomad, Riding Master, Armor of Silver and Steel, another Bailiff for our Bailiff house. Another sure assailant, audacious. Stand ready. And now that we have pushed them back there, we can kind of cut through the center. Take Wurt Bad, that is an additional Vintner for us, which would be great for our marketplace. Go ahead Make and pour ourselves into and a camp stance and come around. Because we can threaten Tullamheim as well. Perfect stuff. Glory be to the motherland. One more turns before that upgrades. I'm not sure why Festus is just sitting here doing nothing. The most suspicious thing on the planet. He might have just dealt with an army of him, the Empire. Ulrika, Ulrika, come on through and see if you can't damage the walls of Tullamheim. Maybe not. Even a vampire cannot. Even a vampire cannot. We'll try to build in the uh, wood hut this time. I'm not going to go ahead and upgrade it. Weiss wound is still, though. Get up to our province tab. I'd love to upgrade her again. We'll go for the mill and the brushworks to see if we can get them in before Festus decides to attack. Get upgrade Weiss wound, though. Got so much gold sitting here, I'm going to all the same. Now's a good time to go for all these outposts, since we have plenty of gold laying around. Outpost for the Great Orthodoxy. Let's go Erengrad, so we can actually get access to the Light Horse Leads, and that should be his most defended settlement on top. Yeah, Prague. I mean, he's got Griffin Legion at Prague, but... 
Griffin Legion are so good, though. Yeah, we'll go ahead and construct an outpost here at Prague. Help him defend this against the Chaos Dwarves. Nordland, there's no way they would retain their lands. Should we give an outpost to Crudenwald or Middenstag? We might be able to help them defend Middenstag. As long as the Trickster isn't still bopping around. We'll build up an outpost here with no real intent on keeping it safe. All right, well, can we just pay for any of our confederations? Who seeks my wise Looks like a non-aggression with the Fey Enchantress. And then we can look and see about... I'll pay for Greetings. free with current... Could... You know, 11,000? Why? Because I'm rich? You are taking advantage, sir. You know, we'll give the Dawi some gold to help them fight back. Ungrim doesn't usually survive. Let's see if this little influx of a ton of money will help. Aye. Let's drink to this. Better. Prince I've already got a headache. The I what Military access here with Horus. So you... Sorcery. Federation Neo now is more time. likely with the Great Orthodoxy. How interesting. I don't trust you one bit there, Dead Eyes. Urkelisk still hasn't been moved. Well, now we'll, we'll leave I you here and actually recruit his troops. Let's get rid of all of these spider hatchlings. Your destiny rests on the axe edge. On an axe edge? We're not gonna slay them because they're not More useful. We'll just send them back to the forest. Decisions. Get rid of two of them and I'm gonna replace them with things in the woods. Is there only about 40 more than our armor piercing spiders? And then I'll get a. Frostworm. We'll recruit some more warriors through global, so I want three of them sounds good. I like three of those units sound great. Then we'll have one frostworm and replace these normal Kossars with Akshina. My choices are not personal. Of course not. They're just retrofitting the army. We'll give him the normal brown bears as well. Commander of the do you have any Heroes here. You do not, so we will give you Adam Marcillus. Trust maiden. The ice court shall provide. And a Hag Witch or two. Lore of Hags is absolutely gonna be the one we're using. Strider and extra speed it sounds perfect. And then we'll go ahead and recruit in. Oh, we're up at seven. Nice right, so play. Guardian of the land. Points here for Kevin. Person's favored is not going to upgrade our spiders at all, which he has quite a few of. It will upgrade, though, the Oath Brothers of Tor, the Frostworm, and the, the Leopard we have, so let's go for that. An extra armor, five more melee defense, and 15% spell resistance. This gift is mine alone. I guess everyone gets skills here. Really not yours alone. Every, everyone's getting upgrades today. Chosen Drusina. Let's make sure Earthing is done properly. Let's cleanse corruption. Defender and of We will grab an additional point into Gust True Flight. Kislev is triumphant. No one can reach the next settlement to steal technology. Is sad but true. A glorious day for Kislev. All right, well, we will send Tamara on through. The land makes way. See what's me. happening in Cathay. No for making some enemies over here with Zatan as well. Does Festus have any friends with him? No, but we could try to give him the first mark. Get wisdom. Would rather steal technology, but you're gonna fail all the same. Hidden. Now, Lucia, we're gonna have you try to do the same. Let's see if you can't steal some tech from Fort Oberstire. Knowledge taken for greater good. And you fail as well. We'll upgrade the outpost here at Fort Yakova. And not do anything here in Nordland. Good way to waste gold. If we want to just burn some money. 
Not today, though. Curses mount upon your brow. Oh, and you've had enough. He wants a peace treaty for 4,500. Currently also fighting the deceivers from the shadows. We return to our graves and ready ourselves for Hemisnacht. You have peace until then. Or how about this? You don't have peace, and I'll burn you in your graves. Ooh, the World Walkers have attacked the Great Orthodoxy, so we join them in glorious combat. Perfect with that in turn. Clan Gritus is finally gone. Thank goodness the Heralds of Ariel are actually up doing things now. Vlad was discovered ambushing. You were back very quickly, weren't you? No. No, he says. This is normal about a time to come on back. Mission successful, upgrade any settlement building to level 5. Balalaika of the Arari. Everyone in a 35 meter range gets 5 extra melee defense and attack. That seems pretty great. Bear's fingers move over its strings of their own accord, weaving a rousing tune to inspire Dodge's warrior consorts as they do their deadly work. What do you think we're going to have some Dodge's warrior consorts as a warrior later on? At dual blades. Awesome. Well, with that, you will we are out of time for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by today's Mother of Stonka episode. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like for the light god and a sub for the sub, though. I'll see you on the next one.